real simple project. This one's just an electric fan. And you're probably wondering, why am I going to repair an electric fan? Because they're cheap, right? Well, the problem is, after the first hot day of the year, the stores sell out. They never bring enough of them in, and you try and buy one now, and the only thing they've got in stock is those expensive $400 Dyson bladeless pieces of junk that, uh, you know, they, they try to push down our throats. And none of the good old basic fans are available until next season. So this one here is seized up. But in addition to seizing up, it's also dead. And it's going to be, these have a thermal cutout in them. So I'm going to show you how to change that thermal cutout and how to lubricate the bearing. So the first thing you got to do is you got to take the fan apart. So on the front of the fan, after you've removed the, actually removed the, the blade itself, you can open up the motor. A couple screws will hold the front of the motor on. That'll give you access to the bearing at the front, but we need to get access to the bearing at the back as well. To do that, we have to remove a cap on the back here and take out one more screw that's on the back, un underneath here. In this case, it's a special screw, but you can generally get those open with just a small slotted screwdriver. It's actually designed for a special tool but you can undo them with a slotted screwdriver. So now the back half of the motor, oh I gotta pull the knob off the top here. Now the back half of the motor should just lift apart. Okay, so now we've got our motor and we need to lubricate the bearings because this thing is stuck. Very very stiff. So to do that, a couple ways to do it. I guess probably the easiest way to do that is we're going to have to separate the motor here. We're going to take out these screws so we can actually pull the motor assembly apart. And to do that I'm going to have to disconnect it from the mechanism that allows the fan to oscillate. So I can do that by just removing a screw here. Or maybe even easier just to remove this one from the bottom of the little crankshaft. Yeah, that one's just as easy to take out. And that way we can remove the driving arm and now the motor should actually pull apart quite easily. So we'll remove the screws to open the motor. Now you're going to have some fine wires here that connect and they're covered by these little white tubes here. Those are the winding wires. You've got to be very careful because they are very fine wires and if you pull on them you'll break them. If you break them the motor is screwed. You may lose just one speed, you may lose them all, but we're going to open this up, we're going to take out these screws. So that we can separate the motor piece here and carefully pull the motor back. Now I've got to remember, we've got these, these wires here, we don't want to damage them. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so that I can get some oil in here and oil this bearing that's gummed up. So I'm not going to actually separate this whole piece. All I care about is being able to get some oil onto the bearing that is stuck. And I can push that back together and I can get some oil into the front bearing at the front here as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reattach the screws that I took out just to keep the motor from falling apart. Now if your motor is completely seized, this one wasn't, this one was just getting stiff. If the motor is completely seized, you may have to actually take the rotor assembly right out and clean off, if the, especially if the oil is burnt. In this case it wasn't, it was just drying up. And it caused the motor to overheat and burn out the, the um, thermal fuse which is going to be wrapped up in this tape block here I'm sure.
Now I'll do the same for the front. Yeah, my motor is actually turning quite, quite easily now. I'll just put some oil, oil into the front bearing. Just a couple drops. That's all that's needed. And now, as you can see, my motor is nice and smooth now. There's no more sticking. Now if it's completely seized up you'll actually have to take the shaft out. There's a an E-ring here that holds this collar on which you can take off and then you'd be able to push the actual stator or, or push the rotor through the stator to clean up the bearing and actually remove it completely but I didn't have to go that far on this particular one because I got the motor, actually the motor burned out before I got there. It stopped working. It overheated and took out the thermal cutout so we'll just reattach the, the pivot here just so that it's not swinging in the breeze and so I don't lose any of the washers that are on here and then we can work on replacing the failed cutout which I've already got, so I know it's going to be that. I hope it's going to be that. So, let's just open up this mess here. Okay, I've got power to the motor, and it is the thermal cutout. And I'm just going to put the two wires together, and you'll see that the motor will spin. Here we go. So, we got to replace the thermal cutout and I have a thermal cutout here. Now on the thermal cutout there's a temperature reading. You want to get one the same or maybe even a little cooler. You don't want to go hotter. The one that was on this one was 115 degrees Celsius which I couldn't get but I did get 109 degrees Celsius which is going to be plenty. This is a thermal cutout. Thermal cutout acts like a fuse. In fact, it will fuse with excessive current as well because it is a fuse, but it's a thermal fuse. And how a thermal fuse or a thermal cutout, this is a one time non resetting thermal cutout. How a thermal cutout works is there's a metal, an alloy, kind of like solder, but it can be made up of different metals that melts at a specific temperature. And what it's doing is there's a small spring which is bonded to this case and the other end of the spring is bonded to one lead and when the case gets to a certain temperature the temperature sensitive metal alloy will melt and it will cause the spring to retract and open the circuit so typically it's connected at one end here this will be the ends that the temperature is sensed on any on the anything on this metal case they do come in uh, glass type varieties as well this just happens to be a metal one the one that was in there was actually a glass type and I broke it trying to get the uh, tape off of it but I knew it was shot anyway anyway we got the new one here you don't want to solder these things on because heating the wires up with the soldering iron is a good way to make the thing fail because this thing is going to open at 109 degrees Celsius and um, well you gotta heat solder up a lot hotter than 109 degrees to uh, to make it work. If you're going to solder you basically have to use a heat sink as shown here. So if you're going to solder the wire you're going to grab it with your long nose pliers or just pliers in general like that and solder the wire back further. That way any excess of heat that you're generating is going to get pulled into the pliers and it's not going to damage the unit itself. Another way to do it is to use little compression rings that come with it and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put these on and I'm just going to squeeze them together and compress them and put some heat shrink compound over it and uh, that should solve my fan motor problem. And in case any of you guys are wondering what happened to my hand here I have a cat that is uh, ill right now and I have to feed it some pretty foul tasting medicine and uh, every time I have to feed it the cat gets annoyed and unleashes its claws and uh, that's what's happened to my hand, why my hand's all hacked up today. Okay, we're going to put our 
wires in here and crimp it with the crimping pliers. That one's on. Now we can cut the remainder of this off. We'll put our heat shrink tubing over top of it and well onto the other end of the wire. And then we'll do the same on the other the other wire here. You can bring the tubing back. This is to insulate the uh, unit so that it doesn't short anything. Else. And I am going to heat this up and melt the heat shrink tubing, but I'm not going to heat it up much in the vicinity of the actual device itself because that would be asking for trouble. There we go. Now we have a good connection and it's isolated electrically so that it can't short out onto anything. Now we can test it again. There we go. It's turning. As you can see, all three speeds. Now I can just take this thermal cutout and tuck it back down in here where it was, which was right up against the coil. And all this thermal cutout is there for is it's just there to as a fail safe so that if the motor were to short out or the uh, motor stops turning, normally you've got air being pulled through to cool, to cool the motor. But if for some reason it stops turning, it's going to overheat and this is designed as a failsafe so that if the motor stops turning and there's no airflow being pulled through from the fan itself the motor could overheat and cause a fire so this is your last line of defense so whatever you do don't take the thermal cutout out I can't stress that enough I hear people say to me well why don't you just jumper it you don't need it well that's the only thing that's going to prevent a fire in this winding. If there was a short circuit in the winding and it were to overheat or if the bearing were to seize up or if something got jammed in the fan blades and stopped the fan from turning, this, there's going to be no airflow over the motor. It's going to overheat and that's going to trip that. And if that's not there, the next thing you're going to be doing is getting a visit from the fire department. So whatever you do, don't take the thermal cut out. Anyway, I'm going to put this motor back together and get the fan back in service and make my kid happy. So to do that, we just reassemble it in the reverse direction that we took it apart. And that goes... Like that. And then this fancy locking screw goes on the back. that 
front piece just goes on like that. Okay. Four, three screws. Reattach the controls. There we go. Three speeds. Low, medium, fast. That's how you fix a fan. Incidentally, the cost of this part to fix it was $2.31. Just an NTE8108 thermal cutoff. There you go. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.